Hello everyone, Mr. Natural from Mr. Natural's classroom here in San Francisco. Uh, today uh, what I'm going to do is tell you the in-between story before I go on with these uh, interval patterns of making chords and showing you how these chords are constructed and then how to modify those chords. I've already shown you the default one major seventh chord, the default two minor seventh, the three minor, the four major seventh, the five dominant seven, the six minor seventh, and the seven uh, half diminished seventh chord. But what we're going to do is go back to that later and modify those. So as chords come up in the music, there are two things that you have to do. One, write out the scale and figure out where the ABCs are in terms of numbers. And then look at the chords, the, the ABCs of the chords, and find out what kind of chord they're asking for. Look at what the default numbering for that would normally be, and then figure out how it needs to be modified. Do I need to take a minor chord and make it major? Do I have to take a major chord and make it minor? Do I have to make a major seventh a minor seventh? Do I have to make a minor seventh a major seventh? Now, the story of this whole thing boils down to three intervals. There are just three basic intervals and they come in several flavors. There is the second, there is the third, and there is the fifth. And with the second, the third, and the fifth you can make up every chord and the spelling for every chord known to mankind. You do not need a four, you do not need a six, you do not need a seven. Those are actually inversions of these others. And we'll show you if we can't go up seven, we can go back to to get the same thing. So first I'd like to explain these intervals. Now, on the piano, every single key, going black, white, black, white, black, white, white, black, white, black, white, etc., is what we call one chromatic tone. It's also called a half step. It's also referred to as a semitone. Those are all the same words. One is scientific, one is old world music, and the modern music referring to the keyboard. Half step is referring to the keyboard, okay? Semitone is old world, old school music theory. Okay, chromatic tone is what scientists refer to it as. So um, what we do here is all it is is going from a black key to white key, white to clear black key is a chromatic tone. I think of it this way. It's a little block, a little building block. It's a little Lego. If you took a bunch of colored Legos and built them on top of each other, you could use Legos, which are all the same size, to build different intervals. And so what we're going to do is look at these intervals as if they were Legos built up so you can get a visual representation of what we're talking about here. Then I'll show you what it looks like when it's written down on a piece of paper, the, the, uh, the, um, the um, symbol. And then we'll look on the staff so your eyeball can learn to recognize what those intervals look like on the staff, okay? I'm also going to show you on the keyboard exactly how to recognize these intervals. Now, there's a second, a third, and a fifth. The seconds come in what we call major and minor. The major being the normal default whammo that comes up the most often. What happens in a seven note scale, there are five major seconds that occur and only two minor seconds. So it's the one that happens the most. It's the major interval, the major second. The minor second is that one shortened or cut in half. It's a smaller version and it changes the tonality and sounds sadder and has more tension. There are thirds. Now thirds is what all chords are built on thirds. And thirds are just simply a skipping pattern when you're skipping from one note, skipping over note, over note, over note, over note. And again, they come in two flavors, major and minor. And again, the major third comes up the most often in a seven note scale, and the minor, the ma the minor thirds come along in weird, at, in weird positions in the middle of the scale. So we'll show you how to visually recognize those on the keyboard in a minute. Then we have the fifth, or what's called the perfect fifth. It's called the perfect fifth because if we take a string and divide it into thirds, we get a new note off of that, off of that string. For instance, if I have a C string and I cut it in thirds and I take the two-thirds part and ring it, or I take the one-third part, I will get a G note, uh, a fifth away, five notes away. So the fifth is always considered in terms of tuning perfect. It's uh, when you divide these strings up, these intervals are mathematically so closely related to each other, they don't have a minor version 
of the state, which is kind of almost accepted by the ear. If they go sharp or if they go flat, they immediately go to two other words, which we call augmented and diminished. And fifths come in perfect fifths, and they can be augmented or diminished, which means they become harsh immediately. So let's look over here at the piece of paper, and I'll show you my little Lego theory here. You'll see here that if we have one Lego, or one chromatic tone, one half step, one semitone, we call that a minor second. And I'll show you how to recognize it on the keyboard in a minute. If I put two, one on top of the other, they're exactly the same size. That is called a major second. So we have two types of seconds. We have a major second, which is two chromatic tones, and a minor second, which is one chromatic tone. We then have two kinds of majors. A major third has four. It's as if I took two majors and put it on top of each other. So the major third has four half steps or chromatic tones in it, and the minor third has three. Now the reason it's called second and thirds is because visually they look this way. They look like a two or a three on the staff. We can't get a half step on the staff. When you go from a line to a space to a line to a space on the staff, you're going a whole integer number. So the problem with going a whole integer number, one, two, three, four, is there is no one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three. So we refer to these as majors and minors. We have to go by the way it looks to our eyeball on the staff, which I'll show you in a minute. Now to come back here, the perfect fifth really is two of these intervals. If you take a major third and stack a minor third on top of it, so you have four plus three or seven half steps or seven chromatic tones or seven semitones, that distance of seven semitones is what we call a perfect fifth. If I lop one off here, put the, the major third on the bottom and then put a major second on top, I get what's called a diminished, meaning make smaller, making smaller, a diminished. And it becomes harsh right away. If, however, I take this perfect interval and I put an extra one on top, is if I'm stacking two major thirds, one on top of the other, I get what's called an augmented fifth, and again, it becomes harsh right away. The perfect fifth is consonant. The diminished fifth and the augmented fifth are very tense and throw off a lot of tension. The major third and the major second are fairly consonant. The major third has a sort of a soft pastel, chalky quality to it. The second is a little bit more tense, a little more thermal, has a little bit more energy. The minor third is even softer and sadder than the major third. And the, the minor second is a very, very harsh form of the second. It's very, very, very intense in, in terms of the drama. So this is basically what the intervals are. One chromatic tone, minor second. Two chromatic tones, major second. Three chromatic tones, minor third. Four chromatic tones, major third. Three, four plus three, or a minor third plus a, a major third and a minor third, a perfect fifth. Seven half steps, a perfect fifth. If we have uh, six half steps, we have a diminished fifth. If we have se uh, eight half steps, we have an augmented fifth. Now, I'm going to show you down on the piano how we can look at the keyboard here to see how we can visualize this. You'll notice that we have all these nice white keys here, and then we've got these five, these five black keys, and there's this big gap here in the middle. This gap, the Greeks had a word for this gap. They called this gap a pycnon, a pycnon. And what happens is this gap, which I'll explain in a moment, is a natural minor second. If I go from the number one to the number two, which is the normal spelling here, I have what's called a major second a major second. And you'll see it has a black key in between. So it's made of one, two, two chromatic tones. If I go from the number two to the number three, you'll see there's a black note in between. So this is also two to three is a major second because it, it has one, two chromatic tones. However, if I go from three to four, there is a pycnon here. That means that there's a black key missing. So this is not a major second. Now on the staff it will look like a second, and to your eyeball it might look like a second. But it's missing 
a tone. Therefore, this is one step shorter. From here to here is what we call a half step or one chromatic tone or one semitone. So this is a minor second. Going from the number four to the number five, again, a major second. Going from the five to the six, you can see is a major second. Going from the six to the seven, we can see is a major second. And now going from the number seven to the number one, again, we have a picnon or a packet, which the kids call it a packet. The picnon is a packet. The picnon is the Greek word. Packet is what the, my kids call it because picnon's too hard to remember and I can't spell it myself. We'll show it to you in a minute here. So the picnon here shows that this is a minor second. So now we can tell whether there's a minor second or not if there's a picnon. If there is a picnon in the second, it's naturally a minor. So now let's see if I look here. There is no picnon here, so this is also from here to here, from one sharp to two sharp, or from two flat to three flat, would be a major second. From four sharp to five sharp, a major second. From seven flat to five flat, a major second. Okay, so th that shows us that we can visually see that interval. The next interval is the interval of a third. And again, one to three is quite natural. And you can see that there's two black keys here, but there's no picnon in between. If I go from the number two to the number four, you'll see a picnon shows up here. All of a sudden, I've got a picnon. And this means that this has been robbed of a half step. So instead of four half steps here, there's only three half steps, so this third is a minor third. If I move between the numbers three and five, I also have a picnon. So this is a minor third, even though on the staff it would look like a third. Going from the number four to the number six is a major third, no picnon. From five to seven, no picnon, so it's a major third. From six to one, we have a picnon. So this is a minor third, naturally. And from seven up to the high two, we have a picnon, so this is also a minor third. So I can tell thirds if there's a picnon. No picnon major, picnon minor, picnon minor, no picnon major, none major, minor picnon, minor, back to major. So again, I can visually see that, okay? If we look here between these black keys, we'll see there's a picnon. This is a minor third. If we look over here, we'll see a picnon. This is a minor third. But if I go from here to here, this is a major third because there's no picnon here. And of course, for here, I'd have to go to there to get that, or from here to here to get that. So we can tell by looking, that's third, minor, minor, major, 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 minor. Okay, one more thing, fifths. A fifth has one picnon in it. If I move this over, it still has a picnon. Going from three to seven has a picnon. Going from four to one, it has a picnon. Going from five to two has a picnon. It's a perfect fifth. Going from six to three has a picnon. It's a perfect fifth. But here, going from seven to three, you'll see there's a picnon between three and four and a picnon between seven and one. This fifth has been robbed of a half step, and this is a diminished fifth. So, perfect fifth, one pick none. Perfect fifth, three to seven, perfect fifth. Four to one, perfect fifth. Five to two, perfect fifth. Six to three, perfect fifth. Seven to four, two pick nons, a diminished fifth. There are areas, of course, if I do this, that's a perfect fifth. That's a perfect fifth, one pick none. Perfect fifth, perfect fifth, one pick none. If there's two picnons, it's too small. If there are no picnons, it would be too big. And there are cases of that. So now we've seen how we can visually tell whether it's a perfect fifth, a major third, or a major second, a minor third, or a minor second. Okay, in a little bit on the next video, I'm going to show you what this looks like symbolically and what it looks like on the staff. And I'll go over this a little bit again.